What's up, guys? TW Pudian here with another video and with another pros and cons. Yep, that's right. Pros and cons. This time it is on one of arguably, well, maybe not arguably, because I think both wrestling fans of either side can equally agree is one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time, and that is none other than... Mr. Heartbreak Kid, the showstopper, Shawn Michaels. That's right, man. This is none other than pros and cons, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and honestly, this is a pros and cons that I've really been kind of needing to do for quite a while. Um, Shawn Michaels being someone I've always been rather divisive with. He's never been one of my favorites. Um, due to some of the reasons that I'm going to really kind of, you know, associate here. Um, but there is at least, before I get to those reasons, there is at least some good things that I want to point out about the Heartbreak Kid. So without wasting any more time, let's just go ahead and get into the pros. One thing about Shawn Michaels is that he's always, no matter what, given you memorable matches and moments. He's always given us, as wrestling fans, something that we will never, ever forget. Rather, it's, soup, rather it's betraying Hulk Hogan and super kicking him. Um, rather, it's the Montreal screw job. Rather, it's his matches with Kurt Angle. You know, it's m matches with Triple H. You know, even the I lost my smile moment. He's always made you remember whatever he was going to do. And the stuff that he's done is still talked about to this day. That's something that I wonder if you will ever see with any wrestler ever again. But the fact that he can do all that consistently throughout his career really stands to the testament of how truly great the heartbreak kid truly is and saying about saying more actually about what's great about the heartbreak kid let's go ahead and get into the next pro I think I'm I know I'm sexy. honestly there are very few wrestlers in the honestly that possess such charisma no matter what they do rather it's in the ring rather they're on the mic or rather them their music just even hitting and that's something that really you don't particularly see with a lot of wrestlers it's like honestly the fact that doing all that can just like the fact that his entrance music can play and he can easily just get one of the biggest pops in the entire world next to maybe someone like a Hulk Hogan or The Rock or whatever uh, is truly amazing in itself. It really just shows the kind of superstar, the kind of absolute, just really like fire entertainer that Shawn Michaels is has always been and will always be. It's truly something special, man, whenever you hear that entrance music. But uh, nevertheless, let's go on to the next pro, which is... While, yes, he is injury prone, and that could be a point against him, He's usually a point against a lot of wrestlers, uh, especially when you wrestle the way that Shawn Michaels does or has quite often. It, yeah, it, it can definitely be a point against you, especially if you're not slowing down. But even with that, Shawn Michaels has always managed to be able to come back throughout so much adversity in his life, rather it's injuries, uh, rather it's his drug use, you know, and just completely, you know, 
start a new career for himself, like start a whole new life, really kind of change his life for the better. Like, for instance, getting saved, coming back as a, you know, coming back and getting right with God is easily one of the best things that could have ever happened to him. I think that's a really good step in the right direction. Uh, and, yeah, I think he definitely became a much better wrestler, a much better athlete for truly all of that. And that's something that I can definitely respect a lot because especially in that business, it's got to be very hard for a lot of people to give up those vices. And as some of you probably know, some people didn't really come out so great from some of those vices. So the fact that Shawn Michaels was able to do that in be able – to come back refreshed and just always having a new sort of vibe to him every time he came back, again, really shows the testament of how truly great Shawn Michaels is and how truly timeless of a superstar and a wrestler or whatever you want to call it that Shawn Michaels also is as well. Uh, but, yeah, I know I've seen, like, I'm rushing through a lot of these, but, hey, man. Most of these reasons are almost kind of self-explanatory, but something that I would say is not so self-explanatory um, is the next pro, which is... I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. This guy, I cannot say enough about how great this was. He managed to make an absolute monstrosity like Triple H's NXT Black and Gold into probably one of the best wrestling shows that's even on today. I mean, obviously, it's not that it's not reflected that way in terms of ratings, because let's be honest, it's a developmental show. You know, it, it, it's a developmental show. No matter what people want to call it's a third. It's not a third brand. It's a developmental show. It's for where the younger superstars and superstars that are looking to get some sort of, I guess, um, positive change on their career go to get better and eventually get themselves ready. Or in the case of the non-younger superstars, get themselves back ready for the main roster. Um, And Shawn Michaels, yeah, he's... He's definitely done that, uh, you know, with NXT, back when it was NXT 2.0, turn it into something special and turn it into something that we honestly have not seen for really quite a while, especially once Triple H started taking back over. And that was a good wrestling show. Seriously, rest like in a, a wrestling show that's not just trying to be a real sport because we because I hate to break it to a lot of you, but wrestling's fake. So it's good to see a show uh, that actually tries to be more of a TV show, realizes that it's a TV show and doesn't try to go the route of saying real, real athletes <laughs> to a degree. That's but. No, this isn't real. Sorry. But that's really just it. Um, The guy definitely brought back NXT with a fresh coat of paint. um, And he made it into truly something special. Though, unfortunately, I am talking in past tense. And I'm going to explain that a little more as we get more into the cons. But for now, let's just focus more on the positives, which... The last positive being. I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. The most positive thing I could definitely say about Shawn Michaels is the fact that he takes the time to really try to mentor the younger generation and prepare them to be WWE superstars instead of just thinking about himself unlike a certain individual. Um... But, yeah, and not only that, he's doing mentorship, not just with his wrestling school, uh, even with people like Daniel Bryan and Lance Cade. Um, But, you know, he's actually doing that in a way with NXT. And you can tell how a lot of the people in NXT really look up to him, really listen to him, really trust his direction. And 
it really is a beautiful thing to see that, you know, someone who's actually a legend in the wrestling business actually go to the steps of really trying to teach the young generation and the young generation actually learn from that because especially with a lot of these current generation wrestlers, they think they know everything. They think they're the shit. They don't listen to any of the veterans uh, and anything that the veterans got to say that isn't positive about him. They usually just respond with calling them out of touch or old or just anything stupid like that that the young people of today love to do uh, whenever they're not trying to listen to the older generation. But, yeah, it's good to see that Shawn Michaels actually does that and the fact that he's doing that in the fact that his legacy will live on forever as just being one of the all-time greats first ever Grand Slam champion dude um the winner of the first ever elimination chamber Mr. Wrestlemania the, the guy's done the guy's done so much in his career you know, rather it's positive or negative, the guy has done so many wonderful, memorable things in his entire career. And it truly is nothing short of impressive. And that is one of the things that will always make Shawn Michaels into a legend. Now, mind you, I know that's kind of like something I should have saved for the end. But I figured I'd go ahead and say that now, really kind of. Uh, butter it up a little bit because as you know with these pros and cons you can't talk about the pros without talking about the cons and I gotta talk about the cons here so with that being said for anybody for any of you HBK fanboys or fangirls that don't want to hear anything bad about your precious Shawn Michaels feel free to click off the video now because we're going to go ahead and get into the first con, which is... I am calling your ass out right now, right here, boy. One thing I will always, unfortunately, have to blame Shawn Michaels for is being partly responsible for today's crappy wrestling. And what do I mean by this? I mean all of the super kicking... The high flying, the overly high flying or whatever, the no selling of moves. It's just, it, it's, it's ridiculous, man. It, it's like, and one thing, one match that I would say really that I knew kind of like jump started that for me was the Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker match at WrestleMania 25. It's just like, bro, I, that match had so many, like, kick outs, so many no, it's almost, almost not really much selling of finishers in it. It just made me sick. And it, I hold that truly responsible for what today's BS wrestling, for creating a lot of today's BS wrestling with what you see with just so many people, not just in WWE, but all over, whether it's AEW, whether it's TNA or whatever. And that's something that I truly, truly can never forgive Shawn Michaels for, ever. And also, another thing that I feel that most people, when it comes to Shawn Michaels, can never truly forgive him for, despite him, you know, changing as a person to becoming a much better man supposedly is i am calling your ass out right now right here boy it can't be denied the guy was a massive douchebag back in his heyday seriously man and it's I can somewhat understand it because the guy was on top of the world he was the face of the company you know at that point and stuff like that um so it felt like he was pretty much untouchable in the fact that Vince McMahon pretty much let him get away with everything like some sort of a spoiled child but yeah so it makes sense why he acted that way but it still doesn't make it right because of just everything he did from you know basically just completely 
of screwing over guys like uh, Chris Candino by legitimately screwing Sonny. Um, and then, you know, they're stopping the careers of other people, which I'm going to get into on the very next con, actually. Um, yeah, that's really just that, man. He was a massive tool, and it also doesn't help that he was in the group known as the Click, which is something else I'm going to get into. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into the next con, which is... I am calling your ass out right now, right here, boy. Just like his butt buddy Triple H, he was nothing but a backstage politician also, uh, ruining the careers of various people or trying to ruin the careers of various people, such as people like Vader, people like Ahmed Johnson, people like Shane Douglas, people like most notably Bret Hart, and even tried to ruin the career of the one and only, the great one, The Rock. And that right there is easily, easily something that I will never truly forgive this guy for because it's one of the most lamest things that you can ever do, even though I know it's natural for most wrestlers to be kind of like a politician or whatever. I don't give a damn. It still doesn't make it right, and it's still nothing but a complete bitch move. I don't give two shits who the wrestler is. It's something that I will never accept. Not from John Cena, not from Hulk Hogan, not from Shawn Michaels. Either way you splice it, being a backstage politician is nothing but a straight bitch move. But speaking of bitches, let's go to the next con, which is... I am calling your ass out right now, right here, boy. The click. Oh, boy, the click. Good God almighty. You, you, it's like everybody talks about the click like there's just this great group in the too sweet and all that type and it, dude it's so freaking stupid i am not a fan of the click i've never been a fan of the click i never will be a fan of the click if anything they are one of the very things that has been wrong with wrestling for the longest time and even you could still say to a degree still are um and really with the only exception being the fact that I, there's at least two of the members that I respect, um, like Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Shawn Michaels being all right, but X-Pac and Triple H, as you guys know, can naturally go fuck themselves. Um, but, yeah, it's these guys are just like, it, I mean, it's like they're grown men who act like it's like they were just a bunch of grown men that act like a bunch of bitchy, insecure high school girls. How can something like that ever at any point be accepted, be revered, be just, ugh, it's disgusting. And as a matter of fact, they screwed over, like I talked about before, the click had a hand in screwing over so many different freaking people like Shane Douglas Vader, you know, um, whatchamacallit, oh, Matt Johnson fucking... You know, people like Chris Candida. It's just like the click have just basically run roughshod over so many people who, you know, yeah, who basically, I hate to say bust your ass, but yeah, they busted their ass to get where they're at and they were becoming stars. They were on their way to becoming stars. They probably had some massive potential, but because, you know, the guys in the click didn't really want to put over anyone else. Um, but either, I mean, except either each other or the people they liked. Naturally, yeah. And they just made it difficult for any superstar to really kind of succeed when they were around. They really did. Um, luckily, there were superstars that still succeeded despite them. But even still, it's still a messed up thing in itself. It ain't cool in the slightest bit. And... As a result, the click to me will always, despite me being cool, like despite me being a fan of two of the members, two out of the five members of that group, what the click has done in wrestling 
and you could say still kind of doing wrestling in some shape or fashion, is completely unforgivable, is completely disgusting, and should never be revealed at all. But nevertheless, speaking of something that's, I'm not going to lie, damn near unforgivable to me at least, and this is none other than the very final con, which is... I am calling your ass out right now, right here, boy. He, (laughs) you know how I was speaking positively earlier about what he was doing with NXT? This is where, unfortunately, I'm going to have to somewhat take that back because this guy, He was doing so good. In the very beginning, he was doing so good. With NXT 2.0, all of that stuff, and turning NXT into like an actual television show rather than trying to be this match mark stupid BS. But unfortunately, unfortunately, um, it seems like it's just down the line becoming more and more the same as like a Monday Night Raw as like a SmackDown. It's just, it really doesn't even seem, it just seems more like a Triple H product now. That's really what it does. It seems like a Triple H product now. It's like, because I would never understand the idea that you take the title off of someone who was actually compelling, not just to me, but the entire NXT audience and NXT fans all over the world, like Trick Williams. And you put it on someone as boring and bland as Ethan page now it would have been i would have at least been okay with it if he if like trick williams had like lost to like joe hendry or something because at least that guy's becoming like more and more of a star as like time kind of goes on and he's like building himself up as becoming this top tier guy so it would make sense that these two top tier guys would face each other for the nxt title but you put it on a bland wrestler like Ethan Page, who's one of just the most generic heels in the entire world. He's one of the most boring heels in the entire world. There's there's nothing to him. There's no charisma to him. He's okay-ish on the mic, but just still comes off rather cringy. There's nothing about Ethan Page that I can get sold on whatsoever. Like, not at all. The guy just stinks. Uh, Yeah, in matter of fact, I'm not even going to lie. I'm almost thinking of making the top 10 reasons why Ethan Page sucks, but I don't know. That might not be for a while because I still got some plans for some other stuff, but even still, man, Ethan Page, one of already one of the most garbage NXT champions you have. You, honestly, you would have been better off putting the NXT title on Wes Lee, for God's sakes, rather than Ethan Page. Ugh. But it, it, it's it's like, dude. It's just a, such a dramatic downshift. And then making Roxanne the NXT Women's Champion for the 17th time. Uh, she wasn't doing anything the first time she was NXT Women's Champion. She's not doing anything for the title now that she's NXT Women's Champion. It's not exciting. Put the belt on someone else, for goodness sakes. She sucks. She stinks. She's boring. She's literally just another carbon copy of AJ Lee, which that's... That's not saying much either, because frankly, I didn't think AJ Lee was all that great either. Um, So, yeah, already not good on that aspect alone. Um, And then, like, the only interesting people that seem to have titles there are, like, Oba Femi. Um, Chase U is pretty cool. They got the title belts now. Um, Because before, it was just those hippity-skippity, flippity-dippity-doodah jobbers known as fucking um I, I don't uh what's the axiom and the um I, I forget what the uh, the other guy who thinks he's like the flash or something yeah him so it, it's good to see that you got it on an actual you know group that has a character or whatever but yeah so there's that it's like he's it, it's like in areas where he's completely hitting he's also missing a lot as well so it's very difficult to really kind of 
decipher what Shawn Michaels is truly doing with NXT. Is he trying to appeal to all audiences or is he letting too much of that work rate, garbage, boring Triple H influence slowly kind of, you know, influence his booking? Like, that's what I wonder. And if the latter winds up being the case, then NXT does not have a very bright future ahead of it, especially even going on to CW. It's like, I mean, which don't get me wrong, the CW, uh, formerly UPN, was like a great network when they actually had good shows on there. But I don't know. If NXT is going to continue to be as boring as it kind of is now, then I don't see why CW is going to waste their time with that brand any further. I really don't. But I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen. But for now, man... And that was just kind of my, you know, quick thoughts on Shawn Michaels and stuff like that, uh, both as a wrestler and a booker. It's just, I, it's like I've always wanted to be a fan of Shawn Michaels, but various things that he's done over the years and that he's honestly kind of doing now uh, really just, it, it just makes it difficult to be a fan of this guy. It's like the... BS he did over the years when he was when he thought he was the shit which I mean he was but still when he was like a cocky member of the bitch group known as the click uh to now where it seems like he's just completely destroying NXT by making garbage people like Ethan Page and AJ Lee number two um champion and speaking of AJ Lee letting CM Punk completely go there and completely just perv all over the young NXT girls? Like, what the hell is that about? Dude, seriously. I feel, I literally feel like a lawsuit or some controversy is going to wind up coming from that guy. You see CM Punk literally tackling, like, women referees? Like, how is that okay? I, I feel like if that was any other wrestler, especially if it was any other wrestler that the Marks didn't like, that would be, they would be calling, like, oh, that's sexual harassment. They would be calling that person out for being a deviant and all of this type of stuff. But because they like CM Punk, oh, it's okay for him to be as much of a fucking weirdo pervert as possible. This is the hypocrisy that I constantly keep talking about with these marks. They complain about one thing, but they completely excuse it when it comes to their favorite wrestlers. It's a damn shame. It really is. But... Yeah, man. Seriously, it's it's just so damn disgusting uh, what's happening over there in NXT. And I don't know, the future NXT don't really look all that bright, especially with the idea that even if some of the NXT people get called, called up, they're not bound to have very great futures under Triple H. They're not. Because if they're not kissing his ass or they're not originally one of his B&G babies, they're not going to have a bright future over there, but I don't know. I hope I'm, I hope that changes in the near future. I hope I can be wrong about that, but for now, yeah, man, those are just my thoughts about Shawn Michaels. For as many great things as he's done, he's done and is doing so many awful things currently as well um, in the world of wrestling. So, yeah, I guess with all that being said, let me know what you guys think of Shawn Michaels. Um, you know, positively or negative in the comments section down below. We can have a po uh, we can have a conversation about it as long as you're willing to be mature. But I know that's asking a lot for wrestling marks, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. And probably gonna prepare for as many stupid comments, stupid crybaby comments for you marks as humanly possible. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, if you like the video, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe if you so choose to. And maybe, just maybe, you can become a Booty Hunter VIP member. Yes, a Booty Hunter VIP member for just $1. Yes, I lie to you not. $1 is all it takes to be a Booty Hunter VIP member. And also um, get access to perks such as custom emojis of people such as Crackhead Tony Khan. Um, honestly, ar honestly, not arguably, not for me anyway, the worst WWE champion we've had in 
like the past few years, Cody Rhodes. Honestly, Alberto Del Rio was a better champion than this guy. But yeah, uh, or as some of you love struck brothers uh, who love to consider Cody Rhodes black and all that. And ooh, we invite him to the cookout. Um, yeah, some of you love struck brothers probably secretly consider him as Snow Bunny Cody or Snow Bunny Rhodes. Uh, to some of you uh, love-struck Negro peons out there, sh shout out Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, and, of course, how could I ever not have an emoji or have emojis or whatever of the single most incompetent, most bigoted, most biased, most egotistical, just the absolute dumbest son of a bitch in all of professional wrestling. You may know him as Papa H. You may know him as as nose man you may know him simply as the game triple h and naturally custom emojis of yours truly but yeah and the thing about these emojis is that you can use them for or at least booty under vip members can actually use them in the comments they can use them on future live streams and they could even use them in discord which i'm going to get into in a little bit but for now, let's get into the next perk, which is early access to videos before they even come out literally minutes, hours, days, weeks, sometimes even months before the videos are officially released, um, you know, with uploads such as this one and others. Um, and now I can finally get to the Discord. That's right. The Discord, which... You can join with the link down in the description uh, to really just come kick it with me and the fellas where we talk about all aspects of entertainment, rather it's, res uh, rather it's video games, uh, movies, TV, music, and even BS wrestling. Um, yeah, we talk about all that stuff. We just be chilling. We just be vibing out over there. Just don't be a weirdo, a crybaby an asshole or a psychopath coming over there. And most importantly, don't bring any of those types of people there either because you will be banned. Uh, but yeah, straight up. And last but not least, shout outs. That's right, shout outs at the end of the video, just like these super cool, awesome people here. People such as Xavierus, Tiffany Stratton Fan, The Gothic Fighter, Marquis Marmar Taylor, The J, and of course, who could ever forget Alejandro, Alejandro, 305. That's right, man. Shouts out to all the Booty Hunter VIP members, man, as well as shouts out to the rest of y'all who just support the channel in the way that y'all do uh, by liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good YouTube stuff. And matter of fact, speaking of good YouTube stuff, do you like me? Do you like video games? Well, hey, if you happen to like both those things, well, I'm glad to tell you that I supply both those things in spades on my second channel known as Booty Hunter Plays, where I not only play video games, I talk about video games and make various different types of videos about video games um, and just anything related to anything gaming and only gaming over there. Uh, yeah, and it's called Booty Hunter Plays, the second channel of yours truly and the gaming channel of yours truly. Um, so if all that sounds good to you, feel free to also subscribe to that channel with the link down in the subscription. Um, and yeah, man, I guess with all that being said, I got a couple things to say. And that is, speaking of subscribing, if you're not or if you're already subscribed to this channel, make sure you click on the notification uh, notification bell to get notified of videos when I put them out. But also make sure that if you don't want to miss even one, even one video from yours truly, then click the notification bell for all notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos. And with all that being said, this has been your boy, T.W. Booney Hunter, giving you guys another banger. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for being an ass and not watching the whole video. You didn't listen to a single damn thing I said. Thank you for being an ass. 
only hearing what you wanted to and getting butt hurt like the sensitive little bitch you are. Thank you for being an ass.